All right, so initially when I received this request, I was a bit skeptical on if this was even a good matchup. By the way, this is a paid matchup. So if you want to see your verse request be put into you know consideration or be done, become a member or when I do live streams, hit me up in the super chat. But anyways, moving on, uh, and link for membership will be in the description. But this matchup today is between Peter Parker from Marvel 616 Spider-Man versus Danny Phantom from the show Danny Phantom. I'll go over Spider-Man first, then I'm going to go over Danny Phantom, and we're going to discuss who would win if they were to fight. Now, starting off, we have Spider-Man. Now, I'm not going to waste that much time on lore because everybody should know about spider-man but he was bitten by a spider that gave him spider-like abilities and made him one of the most beloved characters in all of comics so going over some of his feats casually on multiple occasions he's lifted parts of buildings he's done this either through his own pure strength or he's done it by using webbing um, he's also lifted an iron unit and tossed it, which weighed more than a locomotive, and he did this with one hand. Um, consistently, he scales casually above lightning speed. This obviously makes sense because one of the characters, Electro, is based in lightning with his power set. So, And Spider-Man's blitzed him and evaded him, so obviously massively scales above lightning consistent with his speed he's been able to at times tag quicksilver in the comics he's also a couple times tagged speed demon he's dodged multiple light attacks at one time and did not get tagged um, he's been able to keep up with classic captain marvel he even to metahumans moves like a blur um, he's faster than thought. Um, some telepaths can't even hit him with their attacks. He evades them. He actually at one point fought Iron Fist. And because of his reaction time and his basically precog, Iron Fist left the fight. He just knew it would be a bad exchange. Um, he's actually faster than Daredevil's radar sense and was able to hit Daredevil. This is actually quite impressive because Daredevil's radar sense is highly touted. Um, he's dodged attacks from Bullseye, who almost never misses in the comics. Spider sense is explained at one point instantaneous and results in Spider-Man dodging before the opponent even attacks. He's been able to keep up with and even beat Luke Cage. He's strong enough to punch Scorpion's jaw off. He's been able to knock back weaker versions of the Hulk. He's slammed Wolverine so hard it shattered the ground. He's been able to catch Nova and hit him. He's reacted to Black Panther and caught an arrow from Hawkeye right after. Um, Captain America said that after a fight with uh, said Hulk, he wouldn't have been able to stop the Hulk if Spider-Man hadn't gotten involved. Um, he's been able to actually keep up with and even tag Black Panther historically. He's also able to lift an entire train by himself. He's also lifted pretty casually a tank. He, uh, it was stated by both himself and Wolverine that Spider-Man is fully capable of killing Wolverine if he so chose to. Um, it's also stated in guides that uh, Spider-Man is more athletic and fluid than both Captain America and Daredevil. Moving on, we got Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom, I grew up with this show, so I, I enjoyed going back researching this. So I do appreciate this request in the end, but... Um, Anyways, his parents were ghost hunters. Um, Danny was snooping one night, went into like a portal they were messing with, and came out with ghost powers. 
Now, what can Danny pull off with these newfound abilities as a half ghost? Well, clearly even a base teenage Danny is casually at least peak human in strength. He held off a ghost pirate while smiling in the show in base form. Danny in his phantom form was capable of blitzing the skyscraper sized meat monster. The collision destroyed the monster and was seen from blocks away. Danny came out just fine. Danny can bolo another massive dragon with an uppercut and sent it flying. Given their size difference, the dragon has to be multiple tons. Even when Technus donned his massive armor, Danny was capable of one-shotting, showing his AP is rather consistent. Danny was capable of throwing a dragon who took up a large portion of a football year, uh, football field, so you know you could say 50, 60 yard range if you wanted to. Um, he threw him so far, he disappeared beyond the horizon. Danny sprung up in a fight against Fright Night and caught his downward slash despite the major size difference and supposed strength difference. Danny can blitz a spirit at faster than I speeds and casually entangle it. Danny was so fast that Tucker Phantom actually straight up couldn't follow him. He has shown he can react in battle by turning intangible to defend himself. He, he has uh, been able to react to Ghost Energy Blast in episode 19 of season 1. The blasts look like lightning, but of course, you know, I'm just kind of assuming there, so you could say they're not. Um, ghost Vultures are incapable of blitzing Danny, despite the fact that they are so fast that they leave after images. Danny does brawl on a physical level. Um, it seems some people thought he is intangible all the time. That's not true. Um, evidence is that he tanks a dog pile that craters the area. Danny can tank hits from a dragon who can decimate buildings. A full strike to the face with a spiked mace doesn't even break Danny's skin. He has tanked a hit from the meat monster that is so strong that Danny, when he got a hit, got launched beyond an airplane and came back down just pissed off. He was fine. Danny is able to somewhat shrug off injuries. This is shown with his recovery after getting slashed. Vortex used lightning based abilities and Danny was still faster than him and even blitzed him. Danny showed he was a talented brawler even when he was able to laugh and brawl with prison guards. His powers allow a form of telekinesis to move objects when he needs to. Danny can use a Kamehameha-like technique to blast massive beings away. He can use Ray Blast to incapacitate or create separation from opponents. His Ray Blast is so strong that while destroying a ghost, He's brawling, the rest of the blast goes by and destroys a tower as well. So even the aftermath of, you know, attacks that aren't even meant to do anything, casually destroy the surroundings. Um, he has shown he can fire his ghost rays in rapid fire succession with no problem. Danny can use a pulse technique to get you off of him if you try to grapple him or get in close. As a massive scorpion pursued him, Danny got mad and flew up and blasted the scorpion. This beast got one-shotted and completely blasted apart. Danny is known to randomly use precise blasts to disarm or disorient foes. Uh, foes. Danny has shown he can also incorporate heat properties into his beams to devastate opponents. While Danny usually uses shields against energy based attacks because that's what his opponents typically use in his field of work, he has shown he can use them to propel and repel physical attacks as well. Danny has shown that when entangled like uh, Jada Smith, he can burn his way out of it almost instantly with no problem. Danny has shown that he can turn invisible on the spot if needed. 
Danny's ghostly whale attack is incredibly formidable. He once showed he could BFR an entire army of ghosts with it. Danny can also summon and manipulate a large amount of ice to devastating effect. It was shown in one battle that he can freeze dozens of buildings at one time. Danny has demonstrated he has control over his own molecular structure and he can use this to escape attacks and attackers. Danny has the ability to possess you. I believe it's technically called overshadowing, but yeah, if he can get close to you and is fast enough, he can possess you and you won't even know he possessed you. By season three, Danny showed and proved that he could make duplicates in combat. So, both characters out of the way. In the end, who do I think wins? So, this is actually a really cool matchup. If it was stats equalized, Danny stomps. Way too versatile for Spider Man if stats were equalized. But they're not, and we gotta account for that. So, as it starts, I believe Spider Man would strike first. Lands a hit, I don't know, jabs him in the jaw. But it hurts. Danny gets rocked and he's like, oh, this boy is different. And so then it becomes kind of a tense standoff where each one kind of knows the faster one in the exchange is going to win. And because that's the win condition, in my opinion, I favor Spider-Man. Just too fast of reaction time. And every time Danny comes in to land, he's going to miss and he's going to pay for it. And I believe it'll add up because Spider-Man is notorious when he's trying to put you down for having very impressive striking strength. And because of this, I believe eventually he's going to wear down Danny. And Danny, in order to hurt Spider-Man, has to be tangible. So when he turns tangible, Spider-Man can get him. That's the problem for Danny. And he's not fast enough consistently or with consistent showings to be on par with Spider-Man. And if you get into Danny's higher showings, you got to do the same treatment for Spider-Man, which is even worse. So in the end, I give it to Spider-Man, despite the fact that I can't stand Spider-Man. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Consider becoming members. Link in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for the fan request. Remember, you can request videos yourself if you so choose to. It's been your favorite villain, and I will see y'all later. Peace.